I'm Yasmin. Jordan. Welcome, Welcome to Unedited. Hey, hey, hey. How's it going? It's going good. How are you? I like the hey, hey, hey. <laughs> that <laughs> would be a, great, a unique way to start today. So. Start today. <laughs> yeah. so what'd you get up to this weekend? Yeah, it was a big weekend for all well, the mom and the women out there. Definitely. Yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we did a little celebration for Nick, obviously. Uh, got her a... Uh, she, she's going to go for a pedicure, a spa appointment oh, at some point Oh, you did soon. do that. Good. Yeah. So good. that's going to be good. I think she's going to look forward to that. Got her some chocolates because Zara specifically requested that I like chocolates on special days. So mom needs to have chocolates. To, well, and it's for her mother. Yeah. So yes, do it. <laughs> so we did that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, got her a record as well. Arcade Fire put out a new album. And they, they always seem to release albums around special days for Nick. Uh, the last one came out on her birthday. This one came out around Mother's Day, right? That's kind of cool. So yeah, it's a good record too. So is it her favorite band? Or It's one of them. Yeah. Them? Yeah. I think it's definitely, definitely one of them. We've, uh, we, oh no. No, I didn't see them with her. I saw them with other people. But anyways, that's besides the point. <laughs> but uh, no, definitely she likes them. So and what uh, did you guys do for Mother's Day? Did you like have a dinner, or have yeah, people over, or yeah, do anything special? Yeah, yeah. Her, her, her dad actually came to visit actually just randomly for the evening because he's flying out of the city here uh, shortly. But Sweet. Uh, yeah, we had Red Lobster. It was fun. Red Lobster? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You were fancying it up. <laughs> definitely a favorite. Yeah. 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 Awesome. How about you? Uh, it was good. Yeah. Um, we, Dustin actually worked all weekend, so I was literally doing mothering all weekend yeah. <laughs> on my own, but my kids spoiled me and uh, I got to spend some time with my mom, which was really awesome. Um, I uh, went to, after church, we got these awesome photo booth pictures, which I just absolutely yeah. loved. That Very was my cool. favorite part. I like them. Um, Cause all my kids were in them, but we went to my parents to visit and it was just my parents and all my kids around the table, which... I don't even know if there is a picture of that. Yeah. So that was pretty special to me because it was my mom and dad and all my kids sitting around a table uh, just celebrating Mother's Day. So that awesome. was really awesome. So, But typically we would have done breakfast or dinner or lunch or something like that. But Dustin did leave me a gift and a really nice card. Oh, nice. And Bailey spoiled me. And so like, it's not like it went without. Paige got me like chocolate covered strawberries and like, oh, that's so, great. so they really spoiled me with gifts and stuff. But maybe next year we'll get to do the dinner or the breakfast or something. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good to switch it up. It's always good to have something. Well, unique. and sometimes going kind of out is like way too busy. That's why we didn't. Yeah, we actually like we did relax, but in. we actually ordered in. Yeah, like that's what I would have so, done. I just didn't want to cook, so but I did. So yeah. anyways. Yeah, I've braved it before and I'm like, you know what? We don't need it on Mother's Day anymore. So it's like New Year's Eve, right? You make you, you, you make uh, reservations too late and they're booking you at ten PM or something, mm -hmm. right? So when I was a kid we used to do those fancy brunches. Yeah. Like they'd book at the Willows or okay. like the Saskatoon Inn. Like, do you, do you remember? Yeah. I don't know. With if, waffles and stuff like that? Like the whole like big, huge breakfast, right? Like yeah. as much bacon as you want, made yeah. omelets at the table, yeah. like all that kind yeah. of stuff. Saskatoon Inn did a chocolate thing, didn't they? Yeah, like a chocolate fondue thing. I remember that. You like just dipped all your food <laughs> in chocolate. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so. when I was a kid, we used to do more of that because we used to take my nan and stuff when she was still alive and yeah. we would go there, but... Now I do church on Sunday, so it's a little bit harder. That is true. That is true, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I hope everybody out there had a great Mother's Day. Um, so yeah, happy Mother's Day. Absolutely. A little bit late, but yeah. Happy day. Well, hey everyone, I'm joined here by Sid from Mitchinson Flight Center. And uh, we're just gonna talk a little bit about what they offer here and what they do here. And so Sid, if I were to wanna to start flying and maybe pursue something like that, how would I go about that? Well, this is the right place to do it, first of all. Uh, we're one of the longest running flight schools in, uh, in the province. And we have a great reputation across the country. So the first step would be to actually get your uh, medical from a uh, Civil Aviation Medical Examiner, a Transport Canada approved aviation doctor basically. Uh, if you're looking to go a full commercial route, you need a Category 1 medical. If you're looking to go just a private route to do it for fun, um, you need a Category 3 medical. Once you get that, or while that's happening, you can come in, you can get you sorted out with all the paperwork and things like that. Then uh, we uh, do a unique system here where we actually assign you a primary instructor, and that instructor is uh, essentially responsible for ensuring that you hit the goals that you want with your training. It's a, it's a self-paced program, it always starts with the private pilot's license. We do ground school and fly concurrently. You'll get in the plane, um, you know, you'll go through ground briefings, um, with how the controls look, 
Uh, they'll do diagrams of your first few lessons, and then now uh, you'll pop the plane and they'll let you do the majority of the flying. We offer a private pilot's license, which is what you need to get started, all the way through to the, to the commercial pilot's license. And uh, we do a unique program, which is called our Professional Pilot's uh, Course. And in that program, uh, within the minimum 200 hours that you need for a commercial pilot's license, we actually build in your multi-engine instrument rating. And uh, with that multi-engine instrument rating, it is exactly what you need to get set up and ready to, to fly for any of the airliners phenomenal program and there's you know limitless opportunity and right now it's a great time for to be uh, for being a student pilot um, there's a global pilot shortage in the world so yeah. if you're looking to train and looking for a job I mean, this is this is a thing to do very cool very cool it, are, are there any other services that Richardson um, provides that people can take advantage of if they're just interested in kind of getting to know a bit about flying yeah absolutely if you have no flying experience whatsoever. Uh, we do what's called a discovery flight. So essentially, it's a it's a 30 minute flight from engine on to engine off. It's about 20 minutes in the air, yeah. and uh, you as the individual get to go into an airplane, sit in the pilot seat uh, with a fully qualified instructor next to you, and the instructor will let you fly about 90 percent of the flight. Um, so you get your foot in the door, and and you get in a plane, and you get to fly. Like, I mean, there's not really much <laughs> much better than that. Um, and you get to tour the city at the same time and, and see a lot of things from the air. Uh, you know, we're the city of bridges and it looks yeah. really nice from the air. We offer night flying as well as you progress through your training and it's just a completely different view of Saskatoon when you're, when you're flying at night compared to flying at day. Uh, we also offer scenic flights uh, and, and taxi, air taxi services or charter services. So if a person wanted to come in for a birthday or an anniversary or something like that and maybe book an hour and fly over their family farm, they could you know, they can arrange to do that. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you chatting with us today. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, like I said, we're one of the longest running you know, flight training units in Saskatchewan, 76 years in the business so far. We offer everything from your private pilot's license to start, and then commercial pilot's license, including multi-engine instrument rating, just the instrument rating, just the multi-engine rating, a single instrument instrument rating. We even offer some of the you know less taken courses, yeah. flight instructor rating, uh, visual flight rules over the top to fly over the cloud level. Uh, we offer a recreational pilot permit as well, and then we do the night rating, you know, and all these things we combine into our professional pilot's course. So if you're looking for a, a one-stop shop to really you know jumpstart your career in the aviation industry. We, we're the place to do it. Awesome, love it. Well, thank you so much, Sid, for the time today and just for letting us know about everything Mitchison does. Absolutely. And uh, make sure to check them out. <laughs> so, you're a flyer. Officially, pilot chick. I'm going to start calling you Sully from now on. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey. Okay. So, we just went flying. Oh, sorry. I. No. Ashley and I That's right. just went flying, yeah. but you came with us and you got to see and experience the hangar and watching see guys. the yeah. plane, <laughs> see it take off and go off. <laughs> yeah, I was a little surprised. I didn't expect him to let me like handle the airplane in any way and yeah. he did and so that was kind of a really yeah. awesome experience it's a lot touchier than i ever anticipated it being yeah. um ashley even made the comment she said that the only time her ears popped was when i took over so <laughs> clearly i've got some work to do yeah. um but randy was fantastic he was awesome the pilot that was helping us and they do all these awesome discover tours so we yeah. highly recommend checking it out um, they do commercial license and the private license, so it depends on which uh, way you want to go. So Yeah, it was um, a super cool area. The, the, even being inside the, the tarmac area there was nice and mm -hmm. just uh, kind of traveling around there. Um, I was calling you Sully for a couple of days after you got out of you there, did. right? Yeah, yeah. Th but then we switched it to Maverick. Yes, because so really I like cooler, Maverick. Right? Yeah, so, but uh, I love that you guys got to fly. Mm -hmm. uh, it was cool watching you take off. Uh, actually, just meeting the people there were awesome. Yeah, were Sid was awesome. Super cool. Thanks, Sid. Yeah, yeah you yeah. were awesome. You made it super easy for us to get there and get set up, and it was awesome. Yeah, cruising out in the tarmac was fun for me, though, because I've never done that before. Mm -hmm. And so he got me as close as he could to the runway as I could. Oh, right. He took you out be. in the, yeah. the vehicle. So I could sort of film you guys. I don't know if that any of that film worked, but... Uh, <laughs> What was really cool, too, is that he took us over the downtown area, Yeah. Um, which often we post pictures on unedited of places around the city. It was nice seeing this, like, aerial view, right? Like, yeah. you could see the Besbro and the Nutrient Tower, all the bridges. Um, wasn't quite green yet, but it still looked really, really nice. Um, Absolutely. It was really cool seeing it from up above. You would have loved it if you would have... <laughs> 
<laughs> decided to join you. Decided to join us. So yeah. why didn't you come with us? I'm not. A f I, so I don't like flying at the best of times, right? Like I'll jump on planes and I'll go when I have to, but I'm the person who sits in the middle aisle, headphones on, head down, <laughs> right? Like the last time I flew, I think I bought the internet because you can buy the internet on the planes now. Yeah. So I was like chatting with people the whole time. I just, just kind to of took yourself. my mind off of the fact that I was way <laughs> up in the air, right? So I watched way too much La Bamba as a kid, right? So, <laughs> so are you kind of messed so with me, I think. So is it the heights or is it? I think it's the just the heights that show the crash. Maybe no, it's not even that. It's just the heights, and I just think not being on the ground. I don't know. It's just something I've never been a hundred percent comfortable with. Now it's funny because after seeing your guys' pictures, and even when you guys left, I had a little remorse, thinking like maybe I could have done this one, right? Because mm -hmm. I've been in a helicopter before, which I think I surprised you guys by telling. Yeah, you I was really surprised. So yeah, and I was I was only seventeen or eighteen at the time, and like that was like this. Anyways, I was in northern flying, but there's nothing legal about what we were doing there probably but it was neat being in the <laughs> helicopter right and floating by like the smokestack up in thompson right and uh yeah i think i think this one in some ways i might have been able to do but uh because yeah, once because you said that you <laughs> would be okay if it was just kind of floating i and think not, so and it did feel that way like takeoff and landing were really easy yeah. and then it was yeah it looked like you guys had a lot of fun so i'm glad you guys enjoyed it like i said like flying is it is what it is but uh the idea, lots of people the idea of getting into a four-seater probably just wasn't uh you know enticing me as much that well day. and some people will do it and want to do it and then get sick and feel awful and so that would have been bad too <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> right yeah. so it's probably best but that is true you still got to check it out from down below it was cool and yeah. one cool thing that i thought so i mean obviously when you're in the air you assume it's like the steering wheel but when you're on the ground he let me uh try to like come in to taxi in or whatever yeah and uh you use your feet oh really to go left to right okay so that's weird. Like the steering wheel does nothing. So you're going left and right and <laughs> trying to work with that. the wind. I know. Uh, well, Ashley and I thought it was cool because we didn't know. So <laughs> learn something new and there's all these gadgets all around you and you're yeah. hearing everybody on the headset and stuff like that. So it was really cool. Were people talking to you while you were in the air? Mm -hmm. we well, that's how you talk to each other because okay. otherwise you can't hear. But okay. that he's talking to the tower and the tower's talking to him. Oh, awesome. So we wouldn't obviously talk at that time, but yeah. Yeah. Did you do it again? hundred percent yeah hundred <laughs> percent i'd love to learn to fly but yeah. realistically am i going to buy an airplane yeah no probably not eh no well, so maybe. but i mean to you do a discovery know. to it like to do something like this once in a while yeah i know uh, my son-in-law said that he does it every once in a while he just goes on a discover flight yeah just treats himself goes up in the air they let him take over for a bit and he lands and it's just something that he likes to do <laughs> no pressure right not yeah. about getting hours and like whatever but Anyways, it was great there. It was an awesome facility. We even met a cat. What was the cat's name? Oh, uh, my goodness. What was the cat's name? I can't remember. It was remember. a black cat. It was a black cat. Yeah, but anyways, he, he hung out by the door where they, where they put like, the a picture cat. of the cat. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so. yeah, he was really friendly. I sat down for two seconds and he was like on my lap. Yes. Big fat cat. <laughs> yes. That's why I didn't sit down. Uh, so. so it's a great place. So it's Mitchinson's Flight School. It's in Saskatoon. And we highly recommend you checking it out. We'll have all of the links in the attached video. Hey. <laughs> now it's sorry. Just, hey. Yeah. So it's hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Hey. I didn't plan this. This all just flows naturally. Okay, if you can believe that. Just or a not. natural but, <laughs> Right here, you got it. So we're going to get into our talk today, and uh, we're looking through the book of John, the Gospel of John. It's uh, one of the Gospels in the New Testament, and it's the most unique, actually. Uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the other three. And uh, they're known as the Synoptic Gospels, which means that uh, they have a lot of parallels. The stories are often found in the, all three. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of look at them and see kind of like how they all came together. But John's kind of like on his own in, in, in some senses. Like he's got lots of unique material, lots of unique stories. And uh, I, I just feel like it communicates the, the Gospel a little bit differently than the other three. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to look in that. We're going to keep going through that over the next little while. Uh, this will not be a short series, but... Uh, We'll do our best to keep it enlightening and fun and uh, and more than that, informative. So mm -hmm. uh, John chapter one, the heading says the word became flesh. So it says this, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it so all that to say is that john's kind of in a sense picking up from like kind of a creation narrative mm -hmm. he's in kind of beginning yeah he's kind of peeking back to genesis 1 a little bit but who he's really talking about here when he says the word is he's actually talking about jesus yeah yeah and he's talking about how jesus came down all things were made through him mm -hmm. and that the light shines in the darkness and that the darkness has not overcome it and that that's just a great way 
to say it, I think, that, you know, Jesus was the true light that entered the world. Um, the darkness could not overcome who he was. Uh, let's keep reading. There was a man sent from John. Uh, sorry. Oh, my goodness. There was John? a man sent John? from God whose name was... John, John, there you go. He <laughs> came as right. a witness to testify to that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit more probably next episode. But this is referring to John the Baptist who was going to come prepare the way and uh, get things ready for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then it said the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. No, the world was made through him. The world didn't recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. And so right there, I think it just like encapsulates in, in like four verses what Jesus came to do, right? He came to give light to everything in the world. He came to make himself visible. And, uh, and this is who Jesus is. You see, and I, I've been thinking about this a lot over the last couple of weeks, uh, just on different random talks I've been giving. But, uh, you know, most religions are based upon this idea that we have to work our way to God mm -hmm. or that we have to earn our way to God or, it, yeah. or even better, we have to appease him. At, at the very least, we have to do something so that he's not ticked at us, right? Yeah. And <laughs> angry with us and upset. So what, what human nature says is, well, we start to do rituals and we start to sacrifice things and we start to do good and deeds. And you see that and, in lots of cult, like all yeah. different religions and cultures. Yeah, absolutely. And so we do all these things in order to earn God's approval or to get to him or to find him. And, and, and typically, um, most paths of religion is this attempt of man to get to God, right? Mm -hmm. And yet right here, we're reading in the beginning of the book of John that the gospel, Jesus flips this completely upside down. And it's not necessarily that we have to get to him, but literally that he is coming down to us, right? Mm -hmm. And he's coming down to meet us on our level. And uh, he's leaving, you know, the glory of heaven, right? To come down to earth and meet with us people. And, and most gods... Yeah. Would not do that. No. They would absolutely. not be brought down. Yeah. They're always up, right? Yeah, They're yeah. elevated, right? So, and he comes and brings himself to where we are at. Exactly. Right? Which is amazing. Exactly. And then as, as we keep reading, we're going to realize that he didn't act the way we expected him to act. He didn't have the priorities we would have thought he would have. He wasn't coming down here to overthrow, you know, kings and authority and stuff, but he was coming down here to love and serve people. Um, and, and, and really just live a life of humility, but also a life that would transform, you know, our lives forever humility, and ever. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And, and, uh, and that's such an important verse, such an important thing of what Jesus came to do. And uh, it's not this idea that we, you know, necessarily have to come to him, but he came to us and revealed himself to us. Mm -hmm. And so I think when we read through this book of John, this is probably a good introductory point for us because we're going to be, talking about all the ways in which God through Jesus reveals himself to us. Yeah. Right. And different, you know, just ways that he does that, the way he deals with certain people, the way he talks about himself, <laughs> you know, he makes some strong claims, right. That, that I think, you know, if you're a religious person in those days, you would have been very upset and offended by him. Well, and that's the great thing about starting with John as yeah. one of these big books is because a lot of people might be asking like, who is Jesus? Who is this yeah. person? This book tells us a lot about who he is and who he isn't. Absolutely. Right? You know what I mean? And yeah. so we're going to get to explore that as we go, which then hopefully will answer a lot of those questions about Jesus and why we should choose to follow him, right? I agree. Is John and John the Baptist the same person? Uh, no. No, because no. a lot of people a lot of people get so. that they're confused. They're like, I'm in the book of John. Here's John the Baptist. Is it? Yeah. So I thought I'd clarify no, that. No, that's a good any, one. I like right? that, though, because when people, I was younger, I always thought stuff like this, right? My son so. asked me the same thing. He's like, okay, so John the Baptist is the writer of the book of John? I yeah. was like, no. So that's why I thought about it, because other people might be thinking that. So I, I appreciate that question, but yeah. it's just neat that it's, it, the way it starts off, you know, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God. When, when we hear that word, Word, we're, we're hearing Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to see what God looks like in human form, you look at Jesus. Yep. And, uh, and that's what we're going to be doing as we go through this series. We're going to be looking at the exact representation of who God is. I'm going to read a couple more verses here. The word became flesh. So that's, you know, Jesus coming down, becoming flesh and made his dwelling among us. So he lived among us. It's not like he had this special little, you know, mansion on the hill where, you Castle know, on the hill. yeah, maybe we could stand like, you know, two miles away from whatnot. No, he lived among the people. He came among the people. He was with the people. He was with the people that 
the religious people didn't expect him to be with. <laughs> he was hanging out with all sorts of people that uh, they would have looked down upon and disapproved of. And yet that's who Jesus was. He didn't just come for some people. He came for all people. So good. Um, we've seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only son. And I love this part, who came from the father full of grace and truth. Grace and and, truth. and that, that, that's an interesting paradox. That's an interesting tension, this idea of grace and truth. Um, sometimes we want Jesus to look a certain way. And sometimes we want Jesus just to be the grace guy and just like yeah. forgiveness and it's all good. Pat you Don't on the worry back. About yeah. It. yeah. And, and he does that. And, and he, does. he definitely does that. Don't get me wrong. But, but sometimes he brings truth, truth. into the situation, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that truth hurts and it's difficult and it's tough and it's it's tough to swallow, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes, you know, certain claims. We just went through a series called You Said. What? Yeah, there you go. Thank you for being there for me. But uh, but in the, in some of those claims, he offended people, and it was a tough teaching to get around. And you had to your heart had to be open, and more importantly, the spirit of God had to help you with it. But we're not going to get into all that today. Yeah. But uh, you know, he came full of grace, absolutely. And I think a lot of us love the grace side of God, but he also came full of truth, right? Yeah. And those two things sometimes have a paradox; they live in tension, and yet we need to embrace them more. All the more in verse 17, this is the last verse I'll read in this portion. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so what that's saying is in the Old Testament, we got the law from Moses, right? And, and the rules. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it, bingo. It was do, do's and don'ts, yeah. right? All yeah. these ticks and like, you know, there were <laughs> hundreds of them and it was, it was probably a stressful way to live. Can you imagine living with like hundreds of things that you had to be worried about? And well, wasn't it like 600 doing? and yeah. 60? There, there was a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. I do know the number. Yeah. I just can't think. Me but... too. You put me on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> 166, I want to say, no, 161. Uh, there was a lot of laws. There was a lot of laws, yeah. And they, they, and so it, it was one of those things where you'd have to keep them all and it'd be a stressful way to live. And then Jesus came and the law came through Moses, but Jesus came and brought his grace and truth, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times he would he would, he would would take the law and say, you've heard it said this way, but I'm I'm telling you now. I love that this part of This is how you do now. it, right? Yeah. And so, and, he, and he, he brought grace into our lives. He he allows ourselves to give us our, give ourselves a break, right? And uh, and to recognize that that we will mess up, we'll make mistakes. Um, none of us is perfect. He was, and, and, and so we can share in that because of him. And yet he brings truth into our lives, and he tells us things that are difficult. He tells us things that you know we really gotta glean from. And, uh, and I think we're gonna look at a lot of that as we look through this book. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a good time. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So that's how we're gonna start today. We're gonna we're gonna roll with that. I'm going to throw it out there that, uh, yeah, we're just going to go through this. And I uh, want you to check out the book of John. Uh, if you mm -hmm. have a Bible or, a, or an app on your phone or something like that, why don't you read through, through it with us? Yeah. And uh, chapter one over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking in there. Now what? We're going to talk about how we could kind of practically apply this uh, portion of scripture to our lives. I think, I think one of the things we need to know uh, more than anything is that if you've always seen religion as like this tiresome and like, you know, just unattractive thing because you just don't have time to feel bad about yourself all day <laughs> and feel guilty and work and work and follow rules and keep check boxes. Yeah. And you can be happy that that's not what Jesus is calling you to. Okay. Yep. Uh, he came full of um, grace and he came full of truth. He brought both these things into our lives. He brought us uh, forgiveness. And uh, it's not that we have to necessarily work our way to him, but he literally came to us, to me, you, mm -hmm. to you. And so we can take take heart in that. We could take joy in that. And uh, I know for some people, they just, they think of church and maybe it was an upbringing thing you had. Maybe you've, you've had some wrong teaching in your life that's taught you that it's exhausting and tiring and stuff. But I want to free you from that. And I think Jesus frees you from that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can live in grace and truth in him. Now, when we talk about grace and truth, uh, Another thing that comes out there is we live in a world now where, you know, we see this saying, speak your truth, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone has their truth and everyone wants to speak their truth. But, um, and that's, that is what it is, right? But one thing I want to encourage us to do is that when we do speak truth, especially if we speak gospel truth, is that we also make sure that we season it with grace yes. and that we season it with love and that we season it with joy and the many uh, attributes of the fruit of the spirit that Christians are known for, right? Mm -hmm. Or should be known for that the scriptures tell us. Um, I just think, you know, that's a better way to, to give truth and to receive truth. And, uh, you know, this thing was never meant to be used. The scriptures was never meant to be used as a weapon necessarily, but, that's uh, good. Yeah, you're right. but, but as a way to love people yeah. and give them the truth so that they can come to know Jesus, accept him, follow him, grow in him. And, uh, you know, that's just, 
the way it's meant to be. So let's just make sure that we're a little bit more graceful to one another, um, even when we communicate truth and that we're loving each other and that we remember that that's exactly how our Lord Jesus came to us and communicated this stuff as well. And I will throw out, you know, we did talk about here, you know, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So yes. um, if that's you and you're interested in starting a relationship with Jesus, it's as simple as praying and just reaching out to him and letting him know, you know, you recognize you've missed the mark, that you've sinned, mm -hmm. um, asking him into your life and uh, just letting them know that you want to follow him and uh, just praying a prayer like that. And, uh, and if that's where you're at today, I encourage you to do that. And if you do that, I encourage you to reach out to us because we'd love to help you in this journey yes, and uh, yeah. walk alongside you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'll close in prayer. How does Absolutely. that sound today? Yeah, it sounds great. So if you'd like to join me in prayer, that'd be great. So Father God, I just thank you so much that we can uh, come together here and uh, read your word. Father, I thank you that we have access to your word and that we have the freedom to read it. Mm -hmm. And Father, I'm not sure what's going on to everybody, going on with everybody today, Father, that needs to hear your word and to hear who you are. But Lord, I just ask that you speak to those who maybe don't know you. Mm -hmm. Father, that you reveal yourself to them, that you are this truth and grace that they need mm -hmm. and that they are yours and mm -hmm. they are your child. So if that's someone listening right now, Father, I just pray that when you reveal yourself to them, that they're compelled to um, draw close to you, Father. Father, to ask for forgiveness and to walk with you. Mm -hmm. So Lord, as for everybody else who maybe already does believe, just to walk into this week with grace and truth, Father, being sensitive to those around you, you just make them very aware of who maybe needs a little more grace and who needs a little bit more truth. So Father, I just thank you for our time together and just ask that you bless all those that are watching and tuning in. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I'm looking forward to reading through this book. It's going to be good. Yeah. It's, it's going to be good. It's a lot, lot of deep stuff here. So. Yeah. Definitely. And then on our Adam, we can say we've read two full books of the Bible. There you go. Because we did Jonah, right? So <laughs> if you guys right. follow along, yeah. that's pretty exciting too. So. I agree. Yeah. I agree. All awesome. Right. Are we ready to say goodbye? I think so. Okay. Oh, you're like holding it different than everything. Okay. Yeah. You ready? Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Nice. See you next week. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. What did I say? <laughs> Rock and roll is here to stay. Tom Hanks is in it. What's your yeah. favorite Tom Hanks movie? Probably Toy Story. Really? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's a cartoon. Why? <laughs> Why are we talking about Rambo? No, no, I'm not, I'm not, oh. I'm not ready, but I'll do it. <laughs> Why aren't you ready? <laughs> I'm ready, I said. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm never actually ready. That's not true. What's that? <laughs> you are ready sometimes. Sometimes, not really. But now we can jam out. Don't you remember, like, Michael Keaton, he was, like, on his guitar and he was stressing out all the people from the 50s? Yeah, I'll play the bass. This is why these episodes take three hours. Because <laughs> <laughs> we get so much side trash. <laughs> 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 <laughs>